Phil and I uh, are reimagining the book. Uh, we have a lot of things people recognize. We have a take on the Cyclops. Uh, we have a take on the Sirens. Uh, there, there. Uh, there are sort of some nods to some of the mythological, the supernatural stuff in the gods, which are such a big part of the original poem. But our our take is very grounded. Uh, there's not a lot of supernatural stuff going on, but there there's a nod to it. If, if the Odyssey nerds out there will be very happy with it, but otherwise, uh, if you don't know anything about it, I think you're still going to enjoy it just as sort of this adventure in a sort of this uh, future where there have been a lot of breakdowns. There's a lot of economic breakdowns and um, a lot of societal breakdowns. Oil is very scarce, and we did away. You know, it's a, it's a long journey home. Nowadays, you can jump on a plane and be home, or you send an email, "Hey, I'm going to be late." And uh, we, I think, did away with some of those modern conveniences uh, in, I hope, a convincing way. People have responded to it. Uh, China has sort of exerted itself in our book. And when they take over Taiwan, they knock out a lot of satellites and global communications. And because of the energy crisis in the book, in, this, in the future, it's not so easy to get around anymore. There's no real easy way to do it. Um, and so that's why it takes so long. It takes them a couple of years to get back. But we have our take on the a Land of the Dead, uh, and then the sixth issue is the Homecoming. By the end of the first issue of The Infinite Horizon, uh, the soldier's on his way home. In the second issue, uh, he's made his way on a boat, uh, which goes horribly awry. Uh, uh, and at the end of the second issue, he's left adrift on an island um, but during the second issue at home, uh, his son is, is kidnapped by some of these people that want to control the water uh, in, uh, in the New York State region. And uh, so while he's off fighting to get home, his wife is going to be fighting for the family, trying to recover uh, the son, which in issue three um, we, is uh, our take on the Cyclops. Um, the soldier lands on an island with... Uh, uh, there's a soldier there in a uh, suit that's, uh, we, our take on it is it's a combat monocle, the Cyclops, and he's got a plane there that he's trying to get off of the island, but the runway has been overtaken by an active volcano, so he's having to use slave labor to cut down the trees just to get a runway to get this plane up. Uh, and so obviously there's a conflict there that goes uh, badly. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty great fight sequence that Phil rendered. And uh, so in the third issue at home, uh, Penelope, the wife, is uh, getting ready to go to New York City where her son is being kept, uh, you know, as a hostage. But he's not necessarily in a great deal of harm. He's just sort of there to make sure that the water is flowing uh, to their land. So, uh, and in the fourth issue, which should be out in a couple of weeks, uh, is our take on the land of the dead. At the end of the third issue, um, the soldier uh, is, is injured and spends some time, uh, you know, we don't do anything mythological, but we sort of nod to some of that stuff, uh, where already Africa has a lot of problems. Uh, in the f our future, their problems are worse, and that's where he's stuck, uh, which takes us into issue five, which is our take on the sirens. Um, there's no siren song, but the sirens in our future uh, have, uh, are communicating via radio waves. They're sort of luring travelers to their doom still in our story by offering protection and food and water and shelter from the various problems that are uh, inhabiting this world. And so people hear this call, they, they arrive at the coordinates to a much different situation. and. Uh, the same thing happens to the captain and his men. He's able to get away, uh, which takes them home. He gets home just in the nick of time as things are really going sideways at home. It was a fairly easy pitch process because I was able to say, hey, I want to do a book with Phil Noto. Uh, and they sort of, I think they stopped listening. They were like, yeah, OK, whatever. And I was like, don't you want to hear what it is? And uh, they were very happy with the idea, but they were really happy with, uh, with my partner and co-creator, Phil Noto, uh, coming to Image. They had 
been talking to Phil for a little while about doing a book at Image. So th to them, it was a no-brainer. Uh, I was very lucky uh, in that regard. And I had done one book uh, previous at Image, so I had them on the speed dial already. I had done The Last Christmas at Image with uh, Brian Posehn and Rick Reminder and, and Hilary Barta. And so that door was open to me, and I was very fortunate to work with those guys in order to get in at Image, is the truth. Image called me to say, hey, this is going to be happening later. We just wanted you to know. And I really, I said, thank you for calling. And I hung up. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's such an honor. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be working on a speech because <laughs> there, uh, there are a lot of other uh, really great creators in that category. But just to be nominated was uh, really a treat. And Phil feels the same way. We just were totally shocked. And, you know, gratified, obviously, that, that the book was uh, recognized like that. It was, it was really tremendous. But I didn't believe it. I still don't kind of believe it, but I didn't believe it until I saw the press release on the Comic-Con website. I was like, wow, uh, really amazing.